<sighs> Mr. Cruz, nature. You are beautiful, man. You are something. I can handle the truth. Hey, uh, Bert, are you uh, you ready to get started? Oh yeah, I'm. Hey, Cam, I'm ready. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get going. <laughs> it's like you're really ready for this uh, Tom Cruise episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm really. Yeah. The blood's pumping. Let's. Uh, let's get going. Hello and welcome to the Real World Podcast. My name is Cameron and today we are counting down our top five Tom Cruise movies. If you're new to the real world, thank you so much for joining us. Give us a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications. We would really appreciate it. Um, The real world, for those who don't know, if this is your first time listening, we're all about um, celebrating the cinematic art form. Uh, We want to cultivate a passion for storytelling and uh, we're all about growing our knowledge of movies and movie making. Um, so we, we thank you so much for joining us. If you know, know of anyone who's a film fan, be sure that you send this over to them and uh, let them know about the real world. We are counting down our top five Tom Cruise movies, and I'm here joined by Bert. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. How's it going, Cam? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for joining us. So as I said, on this episode of the Real World Podcast, we are counting down our top five Tom Cruise movies. I feel like a member of the Impossible Missions Force doing this. This was very difficult. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult undertaking. He's starred in uh, 44 films over the past 41 years. So he's a prolific uh, actor, filmmaker, Um and he, he's done, done many, many different types of movies. Uh, he's also a producer on many of his films now, uh, ever since the first Mission Impossible. So, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that's really involved in the filmmaking side of things, uh, not just as an actor, but um, in really every aspect of the production of his films. So a uh, very difficult task ahead of us. Uh, as we dove into this, uh, this past week. Um, and so that's what we're doing this week on the real world podcast, counting down our top five Tom Cruise movies. We each went our separate ways and made our lists. And, uh, now we're coming back together. I don't know what's on Bert's list. He doesn't know what's on my list. We might have some similarities. We might not, we'll see. Um, but that's, uh, that's what this episode is all about. All right. So, hey, Cam, uh, before we get started on that, though, um, let me ask you a couple of questions about our list and how we, we came to this. Sure. Uh, first of all, why? I guess we should answer for people. Why are we even doing a Tom Cruise top five? Why right. Tom yeah. Cruise? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So the reason there, there's a couple of reasons the, the main reason is because uh, everyone's talking about Top Gun Maverick. So this movie just was released this weekend, Memorial Day weekend into theaters. Finally, we've been waiting years for this movie. Seemed like it would never arrive, uh, but it's finally here. And so um, the movie is in theaters. It has grossed as of now $156 million domestically, making it the biggest Memorial Day weekend of all time and the biggest Tom Cruise opening weekend of his entire career. So it is a huge, huge hit. Um, uh, I think people have been dying to see this for so long um, and it, it's getting such good reviews. Um, the, the hype is, is there, the marketing is there and uh, people were just ready to go back to the theater and ready to see Tom Cruise back in a movie um he's got star power i mean he's one of these guys who like i said he's he's a -a one-of-a-kind filmmaker there's really no one really out there like him anymore he's one of the last uh big movie stars that's still starring in these huge movies that are still making tons of money um like i said not just an actor but but a stunt man uh he does all of his own stunts he's one of the only actors that that does this you know so we're, we're there to see see him to see the spectacle to see the stunts Um, and, you know, again, I think, you know, both of us are are big fans of Tom Cruise. So we just kind of wanted to do this anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just one of the few, um, big time movie star filmmakers out there that's doing this. And he's, again, he's just doing it like no one else. 
Um, yeah. So that, that was my reason for wanting to do it. I don't know if you had, you had any other reasons. I mean, I had the same reasons. Um, I mean, I, you know, I will say, uh, you know, you mentioned the producer aspect and according to IMDB, he's got 19 producer credits. So I think one of the fascinating things about this actor, um, I guess, regardless of what I think of him is that um, he he's, it's kind of like um, reviewing films by an actor who's also part filmmaker, because, you know, as producer um, and even, there could be even a couple that he didn't produce per se, but you know, he probably weighed in a lot on how the film was made and his lines and, and, and the morality probably of it and that kind of thing. And so sure. it's, it's, it's a very unique situation because there's no other actor like that, that gets that involved. He doesn't want the, you know, the credit of, you know, you know, he doesn't want to be director. He probably wouldn't have time to you know fulfill both, sure. um, but it's just, he's just such a unique guy in that way. Um, and then on top of that, there, there's a few good movies that he's made that we'll talk about. <laughs> right. um, so along those lines, um, what, what do you think about Tom Cruise in general? Is, is he uh, one of your favorite actors? Is he your favorite actor? I mean, what, what are your overall thoughts about him as an actor? Yeah, he, he's definitely way up there um, as, as a favorite actor. You know, he's, uh, again, he's just uh, so believable in all of his roles. He, he really throws himself into it fully, like you said, not just as an actor, but as a producer, as a stuntman. Uh, you know, doing doing these stunts, these death defying stunts that he does, it seems like in, in each one of his movies now, um, it's just kind of expected of him. Um, so, yeah, he's, yeah, he's he definitely can't stop now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He can't stop at this point. So, yeah, I would say I, I don't know exactly where he ranks. Uh, he's he's I would say easily in the top five favorite actors of all time, um, you know, and, and, you know, because he continues to not only be believable in, in all of these roles, uh, but, you know, he, he's an innovator. He takes some risky choices sometimes um, with the roles he takes. Um, he's played in basically every genre at this point, you know? Um, and so, so yeah, he's, he's definitely up there for me. Where is he for you? He is actually my number one favorite actor. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's not like I'm the biggest Tom Cruise fan. Sure. Um, certainly his personal life. There's some, right. uh, you know, different things going on there that we probably won't get into in this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe next week or something. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I mentioned this before, the, the way he sort of became my favorite actor is because there's simply no actor that has this many great films that are, you know, that are on my list. Um, in fact, uh, I, it's either seven or eight five out of five star films wow. made and then a couple more that are four and a half out of five and a couple yeah. more that are four out of five. I mean, yeah. it's just, there's no other actor that comes close. I give an example, Liam Neeson. He's another okay. one now, especially in the last 10, 20 years sure. um, that has started making these thrillers. And I, I, I think, I mean, I think you've liked a few of them, but you're not nearly in, as into them as I am sure. from what I gather. And that's, right. that's fine. Yeah. Um, but I will say even those, um, I mean, on average, I mean, I'm probably not giving any of them five star, maybe one or two, Right. but I haven't checked, you know, my list, but most of them are, you know, three and a half, four star films sure. and there's a lot of them. So, he, right. you know, he may be my second favorite actor, Right. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, not necessarily because I'm drawn to Tom Cruise as an actor, but he makes such good movies that he is, um, just move to that top place because there's no one else that has made this many good movies. I mean, he, sure. he vets the process so much in the last yeah. few movies that he's done that he, I mean, clearly he will not take a movie unless he knows that it's going to be very, very well received yes. and enjoyed by audiences. I mean, that's the only way to explain it, you know? True. Yeah. And he, 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 he he's at a point now where he can hand pick the people involved. Right. So he doesn't, right, right, he doesn't, right. he doesn't have to like find a script and, and beg directors to work with him. He's the one that's right. picking who he's working with, who's mm -hmm. involved in the process. And, yeah. uh, you know, you'll see these guys, you know, pop up time and time again, especially recently, um, guys that he likes to work with. He works with over and over and over again, mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're great collaborators. So yeah, he, he's at a, at a point in his career now where he can do whatever he wants and work with whoever he wants to work with. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, when we, we uh, were talking about doing this uh, podcast coming up um, initially, I thought I would watch three to five of his films, but I ended up kind of pouring myself into it a lot and kind of use pretty much every minute of my free time 
to watch a lot more films, a few I had never seen before. And I rewatched some of the ones I had. And some of my ratings changed a little bit because I just wanted to, I, if I was going to do it, I wanted it to be pretty accurate. Yeah. Just, you know, personally, I just felt like I would get more out of it if that was the case. Sure. sure. I watched quite a few. Um, I'll run them down, but, uh, how many did you watch? How many, do you know how many are, are uh, uh, let's see here. I ended up watching one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 Tom Cruise movies this week. <laughs> so I likewise poured myself into it, really dove into his filmography. Um, and I think there's only one that I hadn't seen before. Um, oh, the rest okay. were, um, ones that I had seen before a couple of, I'd only watched once, but um what was the one you hadn't seen before i'm curious top gun maverick <laughs> oh well that was the only one. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the only one okay yeah interesting yeah okay. yeah i've Fair seen I, I i did the math i i've seen 37 of his 44 films so i've seen wow. the vast majority okay. um yeah, yeah. only a few that i haven't watched um and so yeah i ended up re-watching a bunch that i had in my collection you can see behind me on blu-ray um yeah, and yeah. and so yeah it was it was a really fun fun week yeah yeah it was <laughs> fun um yeah so i i watched about 10 okay um plus um so i'll just run through them real quick yeah i watched uh, mission impossible one three four and five just for certain reasons okay I've seen, I've seen two a lot and i've seen the most recent one um gotcha fairly recently i watched the mummy which was okay. quite an eye opener because <laughs> I thought I liked that one the first time. I did not like it. This yeah. Time. Uh, yeah that's a rough so I don't one. know what I was, maybe I was just thinking of a different movie or something. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, yeah, I did not like it. Um, <laughs> one of the few, I, and probably the only one right. I just flat out didn't like. Yeah. Um, and then um, a few good men I watched. Um, hadn't seen that in a long time. Mm. Uh, I had never seen Valkyrie. Really? Oh and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's not on my list, but it was really good. Um, and the firm, um mm, yeah was another one that i hadn't seen since the 90s and i thought i liked that movie okay yeah. but i remembered absolutely nothing about it and okay. so i'm glad i watched it because actually yeah that was another one that i didn't like sure um, right it's more stylistic choices but i just right did not, right uh yeah I, I did not like that one it's probably why yeah. i never went back and watched it again i, right, right. Thought I liked it but i never yeah. did actually like it from the beginning i don't know sure. i think it's more that that one probably has just not aged well at least for me right so, sure sure um, and then uh, I rewatched Days of Thunder, Jack mm. Reacher. Um, mm -hmm. I watched most of the first Top Gun because I'm going to be seeing Maverick coming up here this probably this weekend. Sure. Uh, I watched half of Collateral. Okay. And 20 minutes of The Last Samurai just to get a, a flavor <laughs> okay. for it. Okay, in case cool. We talked about it. Um, and in case I thought, oh, I better watch all this because that one may actually be in my top five, but sure. I don't think it would have been. Okay. Uh, that or okay. Collateral. But so anyway, cool. that was kind of my rundown of what I went through. That's so. great. Great. Yeah, great. it was a lot. It Some, was a lot. Yeah. yeah, man, we could do podcasts on each one of those movies. That's so great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they are all interesting. So I watched Night and Day. Okay. I watched Oblivion, mm -hmm. uh, ones, Top yeah. Gun, um, mm -hmm. Legend. I watched oh, yeah. Collateral. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Far and Away. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Mission Impossible 3 and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And then I watched The Last okay. Samurai. Okay. So little, uh, little, little crossover there between our lists, but not, not yeah. all of them. So are we going to talk about far and away later? I don't want to give anything away, but um, we might be, yeah, we might be talking I'll, about I'll far save and away. my thoughts. I'll save my thoughts. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. Save your thoughts. It's still somewhere. a mystery, but maybe yeah. we'll talk about it later. Okay. Right. We might talk about <laughs> it. these lists, these, these top five nearing, you know, again, a guy who's made over 40 movies, we're narrowing it down to his five best or, or, you know, we're, we're calling it a top five list, you know, so how are we fashioning these lists? We need to talk about, mm, you know, good question. And what, yeah. what, what makes a top five Tom Cruise movie? Um, yeah. So how did you go about uh, creating your list? Yeah, that's a very good question. You know, you, you mentioned the impossible mission uh, at the beginning of trying to come up with the, <laughs> the ones that are in the top five, because I think I counted uh, seven or eight that are five star. Wow. So that makes it pretty tough. And so yeah. I tried to think about how to slot them for the top five. Um, the top two were pretty easy, uh, but there were definitely some ones that I was sad to leave out of the top five. Uh, but how I ended up thinking about it was um, I decided to go with a, uh, kind of a well-rounded approach. And 
the thought of if someone were to come to me and said, I've never seen any movies with this, this guy, Tom Cruise, but people talk about him a lot, which five should I start with or which yeah. five are the best? Then I kind of, you know, would have gone maybe a little more in one direction, but instead I thought, you know, I think I'm going to include these couple that are also five stars that maybe aren't necessarily in the top five, but just to, to round it out a little bit. I mean, they're not sure. extremely out there. Sure. The ones I'm bringing in, but right just to get a kind of an overall balance a little better. Yeah. And so that, that was sort of my strategy um, because yeah, this, it would have been easier if this was a top eight, but we're trying to keep it somewhat <laughs> concise. What sure. Yeah. You? How did you, what were your, what was your thought process? Yeah. I could have easily done a top 10. I mean, easily. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, for me, you know, I mean, the criteria was it had to star Tom Cruise, obviously, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, but there's a couple movies that I really like that he's more of a supporting character and especially early in his career, including oh. Taps and uh -huh. The Outsiders. OK, I've heard two, of those. Yeah, I've two movies. Those. Yeah, two movies I really enjoy. Um, oh, OK. But I didn't include them because he's not the lead character, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, you know, of right. course, he's he's cameoed and things like Tropic Thunder and Austin Powers. And I didn't include those for obvious yeah. reasons. Um so, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about um, his sp performance specifically. Um, you know, is he doing a good job acting, which he basically always is. So, but trying to figure out, you know. Yeah, it doesn't narrow it down too much when you it say doesn't, It doesn't, it <laughs> doesn't. But, but trying to figure out, you know, and a, a unique performance, maybe I'm looking for something he, okay. he tried that was maybe a little different than what you sure. expect from yeah. Tom Cruise. Because he does kind All of right. have like, when you think Tom Cruise, you instantly think of like, you know, Ethan Hunt, Mission Impossible. That character was kind this of just, guy. yeah, like that, right. Like it, just the action end, guy, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, just like, you know, right. the, again, the, the Ethan Hunt character from Mission is just like, it's basically Tom Cruise. Just he's a, he's a secret agent, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, so, right. so I'm thinking about that kind of thing. I'm thinking about, um, you know, his most effective films, you know, the movie is the movie doing what it sets out to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about how innovative it is. Does it break any new ground technologically or storytelling wise? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm also thinking how unique it is again. Is it, is it something I haven't seen before just on the movie as a whole, not even just specifically his performance, but the movie as a whole, is it different? Right. Is it something that's, you know, unique in his filmography? Um, and then huh, just okay. entertainment value, you know, how entertaining right. was I when I watched it? Did I enjoy it? Um, is it rewatchable, you know, um, emotional connection right. also, you know, to the characters and to the story, um, all yeah. that, all that plays into it, you know? Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I went about it. More of a broad kind of like, mm -hmm. did I, did I enjoy the movie? You know, is it one that I rewatch, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we are diving right into our top five Tom Cruise movies. The Impossible Mission has begun. Um, this is our, mis our mission. Should we choose to accept it? Um, we have accepted we have. the mission. So um, I'm going to kick things off with my number five uh, best Tom Cruise movie. And it is Far and Away. Ah, oh. so, so we didn't we have, have to, to wait, wait too long. long. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So far and away is my number five, uh, for various reasons. So, um, I'm kind of a sucker for sweeping kind of, uh, historical romantic stories. Right. Okay. I'm also a big fan of Westerns. Mm. So this movie does something really interesting where, it's this kind of grand romantic story set in actual history against the American West. So it's about these Irish immigrants played by Tom Cruise and his then wife, Nicole Kidman, um, who have excellent chemistry, all their scenes together. I really enjoy They They have a really funny vibe. The, the whole movie kind of has this lighthearted tone, even though there is, there are some certainly dramatic moments in it. Um, but I crack up at several scenes that they have together in this movie. And, um, so they play off each other really well. They, they get into trouble in Ireland basically and have to, you know, immigrate to America and, uh, are ready to kind of pursue the American dream and, and, you know, 
Tom Cruise character is obsessed with getting land, uh, which this uh, man, it's, it's Nicole Kidman's father in the film, um, stole his family's land. So uh, they, they run off to America to, to kind of chase this American dream. And when they get there, it's not exactly what they expect. <laughs> They're basically living in the slums in New York City. Um, he's having to box to get money. Um, and so it's, it's this journey we go on with these characters that I just really, really enjoy. Um, the movie is directed by Ron Howard, mm-hmm. um, who I'm a big fan of, really like his, yeah, his filmmaking. He really is. He really knows how to get great performances out of his actor. I think it's because he was an actor himself. Yeah, I think that's, right. uh, you know, part of the reason why he's always able to get good performances out of his cast. Um, he just does a great job telling this kind of grand story on this big scale and these, these great shots of the American West and wagon trains and all this stuff that I just, I really enjoy watching on screen, the, the visual element of it. Um, but it also tells a, a really, really good story. I think that, that I enjoy and uh, you know, there's, there's character growth and development throughout the film as their relationship goes through all these ups and downs um, and so, you know, it, it's one that I've seen many times. Um, I, I first saw it, I think when I was, you know, a, a teenager at some point, um, my family is, is I are my virus descent. So uh. there's that connection to it. Athey is my last name is actually a town in Ireland, um, oh. called Athey. Um, and wow. so, you know, it's pretty neat. Yeah. I, I've never done a, a ton of extensive research into it, but um, you know, I, I do have kind of a, a connection to Ireland in, in some way I feel. Um, so sure. I enjoy it. I know his, his accent, you know, gets a lot of, he gets a lot of flack for it. To me, it works. It doesn't take me out of the movie. I think it's, it's okay. consistent enough throughout the film, um, uh-huh. that it, that it doesn't really bother me. Um, okay. and I think Nicole Kidman's is, is very good. She's a uh, native Australian, but I think she, she pulls right. it off quite right. well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my number five. Any, any thoughts on far and away? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, on, on the accent thing, um, uh, I, I, I have sort of seen far and away and okay. I'll, I'll tell you that, that story real quick, but, um, my, my recollection was, it was either that I didn't buy the accent too much or that I read articles after the fact about it sure. and I, I might, that might not even be the case. It might just be that I'm like, I'm not sure I'm buying it. Like, I don't know that it was like a news story per se. Sure. I'm just saying, I don't remember which is which. Right. But, uh, let me just paint the story a little bit for you if I can. Um, sure. I went to see far and away in the theater. Okay. And I was probably 19. Okay. On a date. Oh yeah. Um, and, uh, and I don't love Westerns. Okay. Right. <laughs> and we sat through about half of it and walked out, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't say, I mean, I'm not saying there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with my date, but sure. um, we probably were talking and stuff yeah. like that through it. Um, right. Right. So yeah, I can't give it a fair opinion. I, I sure. I, I kind of wish I would have gone back and rewatched it though. And I, I probably will now because, you know, I, I like Tom Cruise a fair bit. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so unfortunately I can't really compare, but gotcha. I, I'm sure I would have much better perspective now than when I was 19 and on a date. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 uh, that's for sure. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you should definitely give it a rewatch and, um, and, and let me know what you think, because yeah, it reminds me a lot of, of, of Titanic. I think it has, you know, it has a lot in common with it, the historical setting, oh, the fictional yeah. characters, love story, you know, yeah. that whole thing. Um, so, uh, gotcha. yeah, yeah. I think, I think you might enjoy it now. It's not, it's not a heavy okay. Western. I, I don't know if I would even consider it a Western necessarily. It's just that it takes yeah. place part of it in the West, not even yeah. a ton of it yeah. really more of the, the, the third act really is the only part that's actually in the American West. Okay. Um, a lot I was, of it. I didn't remember that too much. So that, that, yeah. It's like, you know, the, the beginning. <laughs> yeah. The beginning's all Ireland, you know, okay. and then, yeah. and then it, yeah. again, it moves to New York city and then it finally moves to the West. So it's, it's those three locations as okay. we move through the story. Okay. Um, that explains it. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay. yeah. So wow. anyways, that's my number five, uh, movie. I really okay. enjoy. And again, I, I watched constantly watched it, you know, with my wife the other night and we both, we both really enjoy the film. So it must be really good, uh, to be on your five, uh, considering there's some really tough competition. There is. I, and, 
And again, it, it the number five spot, it went back and forth between several movies for me. Yeah. yeah Ultimately, right. I, I kind of went with my heart on it more than anything. Sure. Sure. You know, it's just the, the movie that kind of I enjoy and connect with more, um, I think, nice. is ultimately why I, I decided to, to put it in the top five. Um, but yeah, okay. a lot of a lot of movies were um, were vying for that spot. So, yeah. Is, is it a five star? It's four and a half. It's four and a half. Yeah. Okay. He not all of. Yeah. Not all of these top five are, are five stars for me. All of um, mine are. So, yeah. 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 You'll have yeah. to tell me at what point they turn into five star if they do. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Yep. So now on to your number five. Yeah. My number five is night and day. Oh, great. Um, that was the one that was almost my number five. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Okay. That one yeah, and one good. other one we'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I ended up throwing it in there, um, because, because it's probably the, the most, um, funny and fun movie and it's kind of a kind of a romantic comedy i mean it's it's got yeah. a little bit of everything right. like some of his movies do right um yeah and so i just felt like to have something lighter in there and and tom cruise is really funny um if he chooses to do that kind of movie yes and uh this night and day um you know it's just one that every time i watch it uh and put it away for a few months i i you know eventually i when it pops in my mind, I'm like, man, I really want to watch that movie again. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of those that I keep going back to. So yes. that was another reason I put it in my top five, because for the rewatchability, I mean, it's probably as, as much as any other movie in my top five, it's one that I pull out more often Yeah. because it's just easier. You know, it's a lighter watch. Um, I don't have to mentally or, or emotionally prepare for anything. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of fun. Sure. So, um, yeah. And, and, and you've seen it. So uh, yeah. What do you, so it's obviously one that you enjoy quite a lot too absolutely it's it was so much fun rewatching and i'll mention about you know our, our, the ones we we rewatched. Mm -hmm. uh the top i did not rewatch that one by the way yeah yeah i did because uh -huh. again it, i was kind of i kind of had i think my top two were locked in like i instantly knew as soon as we we're yeah, doing a tom yeah. cruise thing i knew my top two so the other three i was like yeah. okay i need to watch these again to figure mm -hmm. out which one i like a little more than the other ones because they're all right, right there so yeah, yeah, this one was very close to making it. It's a super fun, you know, pure escapism popcorn movie. Yeah. Uh, like you said, romantic comedy mixed with an action movie. Um, he, he's playing off Cameron Diaz so well. Yeah, I mean, they have yeah. such great chemistry in this movie. And they're having uh, a great time making the movie. You can tell that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're having a great yeah. time. They're getting to go all over the world. These beautiful locations they're in, right, you know, Jamaica right. and europe and and all these different places they got to go to um yeah. some great action sequences it's very over the top mm -hmm. you know even more so than, than mission impossible i mean mission impossible is somewhat grounded but these i mean they just go over the top he's jumping on the hoods of cars from the freeway and they're doing all kinds of crazy <laughs> right. stuff right um and so and i don't ever feel like it gets too far over the top you know yeah it's it's never much, like it wouldn't work it, it's one of those movies that it toes the line between it's it's like almost a parody of a of an action movie it's yeah, like they're almost spoofing right. the genre but they're not quite right. there it still yeah, has a lot yeah. of genuine like emotion and heart and characters you actually care about than right. just being an outright comedy you know so yeah, yeah. they toe the line very and that tonal balance is very difficult to find um and it's it's just very well written um if, of course calls to calls to mind movies like Mr. And Mrs. Smith, Killers. I this didn't, means I didn't love Mr. And Mrs. Smith, by the way. I don't either. I think this is far superior. Uh, yeah, me far too. superior. Yeah, yeah it, it, it just does such a better job. You know, the only one that I could compare it to, I think, is True Lies. You know, where yeah, it, it, it kind is, of yeah. has that similar yep. vibe uh -huh. um, and enjoyability. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And James Mangold, who directed it, Harrison. Yeah, James. Mangold, I know you like him a lot. He's he's a great director um man everything he does he just knocks it out of the park uh, from early in his career um you know more recently things like walk the line i really like logan ford yeah, versus logan ferrari uh you know and i'm super excited because he's doing the new indiana jones movie oh um, really okay yeah okay yeah i didn't know who was so, directing that yeah so Spielberg's yeah. not directing that huh he's not no he stepped down and okay. let mangled take over and mangled uh okay. rewrote the script and he's directing yeah. it too so Okay. pretty cool but uh yeah this is a script he actually didn't write i'm sure he you know kind of toyed with it on set a little bit but oh sure um, yeah you know yeah night and day is 
tons of fun. Always have fun yeah. watching this movie. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, good. Cool. All right, so let's jump into my number four, which is Oblivion. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay, I'm cool. Your pick. Yeah. So Oblivion is a movie, it's one of these ones that I rewatched just to kind of cement its place. It was, it was, I was pretty sure it was going to be in there, but I wasn't sure where I was going to put it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Oblivion made it because it's such an original sci-fi film, I feel like, um, which is rare nowadays, you know, right. Another thing about Cruz is he doesn't really do franchises outside Mission Impossible. He doesn't really do sequels yeah. to his movies very often. I think right. it's really just Mission and Jack Reacher and now Top Gun are yeah, the only ones well, he's I, ever done a sequel to. So if Mummy um, took off, that would have been another thing. But right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I, I, but I, I like that because what it yeah. what he does is he takes risks on these kind of very original, risky mm -hmm. sci-fi, you know, original films that um, wouldn't have been made otherwise, probably without <laughs> without him backing it. Um, because right, it is a kind of right. bizarre idea you know it's it's kind of a, a weird plot um and you yeah, know yeah. but it's the first time he worked with a director named joseph kaczynski mm -hmm. um this guy his first film was tron legacy so he's a guy who right. comes from the world of architecture he went to school for architecture and oh, so he's interesting he's got that an eye for, for tron. yeah he's got an eye for the visual the kind of the, yeah. all, the production design in his movies is always top notch yeah, and yeah. Oblivion is no exception. I mean, that sky tower that they're in is incredible. Yeah. You know, that yeah. glass house, the, the 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 bubble ship that he flies around in is such a cool yeah. design. Right, um, right. The, the whole look of the film, even, you know, the outside world of this kind of post-apocalyptic landscape mixed with this future tech, you know, that has this, this great uh, melding of these two worlds that um, just feels otherworldly. It feels totally different from anything I've seen before. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, just breathtaking visuals. The cinematography is great. Uh, you know, it has a great score um, by a band called uh, M84, I think is what they're called. Um, it's their first score that they'd ever done, much like Daft Punk did in, with uh, Tron Legacy. Um, and, it, and it reminds right, me of that a little right. bit. It's a little more of a traditional score, but it has a, definitely a lot of the synthy kind of techno stuff mm -hmm. in there as well um seamless cgi uh i mean i, I don't yeah, see any yeah. of the cgi in this movie i i, right, I believe right. all of it the whole way through yeah uh yeah. you know they shot a lot of it in iceland um oh, wow. and and they they were able to just kind of put the digital stuff in and mm. you just you just don't realize it's there um so it's a totally believable world um it, it has a small cast very small cast of characters you know um, and all of them do a phenomenal job uh, playing the characters and the roles and uh, making the relationships believable. And the movie just has such deep themes on humanity and memory and survival, um, you know, the soul and love and sacrifice. I mean, all these big themes are, are being dealt with here. Um, and they just do an excellent job presenting all of it um it, it's not a movie that uh, it, it is kind of a complex plot but it's it's easy to follow i don't find a, a hard a hard time following the plot really um the action sequences are crazy good i mean thrilling action sequences um some kind of scary moments some uh you know just kind of you know big moments uh, emotionally too um that are played very well um, you know, it's kind of got this kind of poetic romanticism thing with this kind of heavy sci-fi action that they're going through the whole movie. And I just, I enjoyed every second of it. I mean, it was even better this time. I've seen it probably at least five times since it came out, oh, um, yeah. but it, it had been a while. And so uh, watching it this time, it just it really blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think it's a great movie too. Uh, I think currently I have it at four stars because it's one of those that I want to rewatch again. And uh, that's where I had, I, I had it at four stars. Yeah. Went up I, to four I've and a half. A, yeah. I mean, it's the movie's not that old. I've seen it yeah. a couple times. 
Um, and I do really enjoy it. And I, yeah, I mean, I can't say a whole lot over and above what you said. I mean, just visually and, and story-wise both, it's just terrific. It, I do remember that it's, you know, it's somewhat of a small cast yeah. and I, I remember wishing that it maybe could have shown a little bit more of other, um, I, I don't want to say people because I don't really want to talk a lot about the ending, but I, <laughs> right, right. I, sure. I, but I will say it has a great ending too. It does. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great pick because yeah, it's a very enjoyable movie and I, I, you know, I can't wait till the next time I get to see it. Uh, it's one of those, you know? Yeah. 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 Like you mentioned with the ending, it's just, it's one of those movies that when I watch it, it's just a satisfying journey that I just took Exactly. with this character yeah. going through all this crazy stuff he goes through. Yeah. And again, he's just so believable when he deals with yeah. all these things that, uh-huh. A person's never dealt with. We'll, we'll never deal with these kind of things that he's going through, but you just believe it. You believe he's in this, on this journey, yeah. dealing with all these things that he deals with. And yeah, that, that ending is, is really good. A really, um, again, just, just a satisfying story that they tell with that film. Yeah. Funny note about uh, that film. When I heard it was coming out and I didn't know anything about it, and I, but I, I heard that Tom Cruise was making a movie called Oblivion. My mm-hmm. first thought was, oh, that that's going to be a good movie based on the video game. Oh, right. Yes. That is a game. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played back it, but I've heard about it. A couple it. years before that movie came out, that game was really, really popular. And right. I actually don't know that I've played it, but um, I, you know, I know a lot of people that did. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, okay, that's an interesting choice by Tom, but it, you know, it was not based on the video <laughs> right. game at all. And I'm kind of yeah. glad, you know, cause a lot of those are terrible, you know? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Video game adaptations are very difficult. <laughs> There's maybe yeah. two that are good out of the many that they've made right all right so now you're up okay yeah my number four is minority report oh all right uh and so um you know what i can tell you about minority report i mean obviously steven spielberg um it's one of a couple that he did in a row where uh, he hired uh, Janusz Kamenski. And so the look of the film is, I mean, it's a futuristic film, but what he achieved in that movie uh, visually um, with the lighting, like it's not too often that I talk about lighting in a film, Mm, you know, I mean, I'll talk about how nice it looks, but it's just so um, interesting and creative. Uh, You know, that's just one aspect of it. And then of course you have this really ambitious plot, uh, you know, involving, um, you know, pre-crime and, and yes. you know, arresting someone before they committed a crime, which is very intriguing. It is. And, you know, you, you know, you doubt it would actually happen. And they, they deal with that. They talk about that too, you know, about yeah. the, the morality, morality of it and that kind of thing. Um, right. There's some great action sequences. Um, yeah. Oh, I know I was going to forget his name. Uh, who, who's the guy that uh, sort of his adversary um, that's chasing him? Uh, well, there's Neil McDonough. Yeah who's the cop. And then there's Colin Farrell, who's kind of the bureaucrat. Colin guy. Farrell. Yeah. 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 Neil, Neil McDonald. He's the blonde haired guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's good too. He's yeah, great. He's good too. He and then um, the, the tech they use in the film is, is really great. And it, you, you, you can tell to me, it feels like Spielberg, um, but, but a grown up Spielberg, like now he really gets it with modern tech and how, how he can use it in a futuristic way. Cause you know, a lot of his films were based in present time and, sure. and stuff like that. So I feel like Spielberg does a great job of presenting the tech in this film Yeah, and you know, the suits they wear to fly and this kind of thing. Right. Um, the, the scene with the, the eyeballs, yes. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't love that scene. I appreciate it. Like, yeah. uh, like it's bold, you know, it is, um, and, and it's not one that I want kids walking through the room with right. necessarily, <laughs> but it's just, it's just bold, especially for Spielberg, you know? Yeah. It's memorable. It's more of family friendly. Right. Uh, right. Things, but uh, yeah, this is yeah, much more so, mature than his other films. Yeah. Very well. And yeah. then you've got the very dark um, uh, themes about um, his, his uh, Tom Cruise's son in the film. Yeah. It goes to some really, really dark places, but yeah. all that does is really make you feel, uh, desperately for the characters involved. Yes. I mean, it, it achieves so well in that sense. Yep. Um, and just kind of, as I'm thinking about it, I, I wish I had time, time to rewatch that as well, but, yeah. uh, and then you've got that, um, the, the scene with the cars, uh, when, uh, you know, cause there's obviously self-piloted and then yes. on the one point Tom Cruise is, uh, jumping from one to the other while they're moving yeah. curiously and that kind of thing. Right. And, and it's, 
I'm sure there's some CGI involved. And sure. I, I'd say it 99% a, uh, achieves digitally, you know, what they're doing with the CGI. And either way, it makes for just a fantastic chase scene and all the stuff yeah. with Colin Farrell. Yeah. And he's chasing them and in that factory. There's some great yeah. stuff there. Yeah. There's a lot I could say about it, but it's just, yeah. it's just a, a, a great film. One, it's one of those I do have to kind of, dig in a little bit and be ready for because of the themes uh with like his son and that kind of sure, stuff sure it can be a bit tough to watch but yeah. it's just fantastic i mean that that's that's my thoughts but what are your thoughts about minority report i agree with everything you said and i'm going to hold my thoughts until we get to it on my list great okay <laughs> that sounds good that, that's that, all that, uh, okay excellent <laughs> all right so now we're jumping into my number three so the number three best Tom Cruise movie for me is Top Gun Maverick. Ah, so Top Gun Maverick. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Top Gun Maverick. I know you haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm not going to go into any spoilers at all. But um, what I will say is that it's probably the best theater experience I've had, maybe since oh. uh, uh, Endgame or. Wow. Or, yeah, some, something big. Star Wars, maybe Rise of Skywalker when that came out. Um, it, it was it was a thrilling experience. I mean, truly, um, when the lights went down and, uh, you know, uh, it started. Uh, I won't even tell you how it started. I'm not going to give anything away, but <laughs> it's the way it starts is great. Um, and then when we get into the story, the story they tell is so uh, unexpectedly emotional and impactful. Mm -hmm. I just did not, I did not see it coming. Um, it, it, the way it uses uh, the way it builds on the original um, is, is surprising and uh, just affecting uh, in, in a really <laughs> big way that, that again, I just, I, I, I wasn't expecting at all. So uh, of course, a ton has already been said even before the movie came out about th these aerial sequences um, that Tom Cruise and, and the rest of the cast uh, actually performed. Um, they're, of course, not flying these jets. That's not legal, but they are in the jets, actually in the jets as they are flying around and doing these incredible stunts, um, real speed, real G's they're yeah. experiencing and you can see it on their faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it is, mm -hmm. it's, it's mind boggling truly to watch these, uh, these aerial stunts that they pulled off. Um, uh, so just for that alone, it's worth the price of admission. But on top of that, the story they're telling with Maverick and his journey, you know, 30 years on from where we left him uh, is really, really uh, just great. Uh, Cruz does uh, a great job playing the character and um, the, the supporting cast is great as well. Jennifer Connelly's in there. Um, John Hamm is in there. He does a great job as his character as well. The young cast, Glenn Powell stood out um, as his role as, as hangman and uh, Miles Teller as rooster did an excellent job as well. Um, but the entire, the entire supporting cast is great. Um, this is a reteaming of um, Cruz and Joseph Kaczynski, who we just talked about did Oblivion. Right. Um, so it's another director that he's kind of come back to and, and worked with again. Um, this movie, I think, went through a few different directors before it even got made. You know, I've been trying to make it for a oh, while. Right, um, right. It's gone, gone through many different iterations of the script. Christopher McQuarrie, um, who wrote and directed uh, the most recent two Mission Impossible films, yeah, is credited yeah. as a screenwriter on it. Okay. Um, very good screenwriter did a great job writing the script, um, with a couple other guys. Um, but yeah, Kaczynski, I mean, uh, just to talk about him a little bit more Tron legacy, which I, I really am a big fan of oblivion, obviously huge fan of another film he did called only the brave, um, which is, is underrated. I don't think it's his best film, but I think he did a great I job with see it. that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely watch it. He, he, you know, it tells a true story uh, about these firefighters who fought these wildfires um, and, and he does a great job with, with the cast. You know, um, okay. I think he, he really showed his skill as an actor's director in that film more than he had before um, and does it even better with Top Gun Maverick. I mean, really. 
um, does does a does a really good job. So yeah, I, I don't want to go on and on too much about it because again, I know you you haven't seen it yet, um, and people listening may not have have seen it yet either. But uh, only on one viewing, it was really difficult to make this decision. I almost put it at the five spot just because I've only seen it once, and I don't know on a rewatch maybe it won't be quite as good. Maybe I'm you know living in the hype too much or something. I'm not sure, but sure, that's fair. Yeah. But it, it was just a movie that, you know, as soon as it was over, I was like, I'm going to have to put this in the top five because wow. it's just, it's just that good. You know, believe the yeah, hype on, yeah. on it. <laughs> I, I really can't wait to see it. Everybody says it's really great too. I, I don't read anything. I, have, I haven't even watched the trailer. So great. Uh, and, and, you know, you mentioned the emotional content and that's exactly you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this list, because these movies all have such substance. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that's the difference between, um, you know, the, the movie could have been made, they, they, I mean, they could have phoned it in, people would still come see it for nostalgia alone. Exactly. And nobody probably would have faulted Tom Cruise for phoning it in. Sure. But he doesn't. Right. And yeah, by the way, so, you know, ba- based on how you describe it, um, if we're in a five star territory it, it i had to put it four and a half now be, again be, just because Whoa. i've only seen it once oh okay. i, re- I right. rarely All give right. a five star if i've only seen it once just because yeah okay that's on a rewatch enough. it might go i might go eh, i was sure. Sure. i don't know so that's why it's at four and a half yeah You're as close as you can get to five but not yeah. quite at five sure okay yeah because yeah. it is and it is going to be a different experience uh on video there's, there's sure. movies that i watch on video and i'm like that was better in the theater and vice versa Exactly. Exactly. That. Okay. So that was my number three pick Top Gun Maverick, the new film um, now in theaters. Check it out. Um, so let's jump on over to Bert and see what's your number three. My number three is War of the Worlds. Oh, excellent choice. Uh, really? Okay. Excellent well, choice. You know, cause I, I get the feeling that uh, a lot of people don't think of this movie as fondly as, as I do. Um, yeah. Uh, I can tell you that when I saw it in the theater, um, I was not expecting it to be nearly as good as it was. Um, so there's always that when your expectations are lower. Right. Um, obviously, Steven Spielberg directed. It's that other film that Janusz Kaminski, uh, however you say his name, yep. uh, was the, the director on. And, and what they achieved with lighting and color. Again, yeah. I, it's a weird thing to talk about with films. And there's few I would even point out color, you know, or yeah. the color palette. Yeah. But it's so unique and rich. Um, and then obviously the performances are good. You got um, Tom Cruise is playing um, right around that time was when things weren't going the greatest with Nicole Kidman. And right. he knew that he couldn't play like necessarily the automatic hero in that one. And I think sure. he does that fantastically. He does. Um, uh, you know, Spielberg obviously is a master at what he does. Um, there's yeah. a scene um, shortly after the initial attack. Uh, when the family is driving away on the freeway and trying to dodge people and, and right, cars and this oh kind of yeah, thing. yeah. And I don't know if you remember, but there's this scene where the camera kind of flies in from a distance. And yes, and movies have copied this since then. But right. the camera flies in, and I think it even goes into the car with them, it does. and then around the car. Yeah, and uh, and, and it just when I'm watching the film, I'm like, how are they doing that? Like, normally yeah. I don't think about camera work when I'm watching the movie, but right. I try to keep an eye out for it because you know, it's, it's, it's art, you know, it's art sure, the way sure. they, they try to pull the, pull off these camera tricks. Yeah. And I still don't know how they did it. Uh, but it, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's things like that that really stick out. Um, yeah. the, the creatures themselves, the, the tripods or whatnot, I, mm-hmm. I had never seen the original. Um, okay. I didn't really know anything about it, but yeah, to me, um, to me, this is a horror movie. Now I looked up on, um, you know, on, on Letterboxd, for instance, they don't classify it as a horror movie. To me, um, they were pretty scary. And I don't mean like yeah. I was like literally frightened, but I just mean, sure. it just, I sort of had that feeling in my, in the pit of my stomach, like, oh, these things are creepy. Yeah, they are. And I, I kid you not, it's probably the only film that I've ever had nightmares about. <laughs> wow. And, and, yeah. and, and it's not like, cause I went to bed terrified. I sure, assure sure. you, uh, yeah. but for whatever reason two at least two or three times in, in maybe the year after that film, I woke up and I'm like, Oh goodness. I was dreaming about tripods and like <laughs> yeah. they were, I was in, in the middle of it. Right. Right. And stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and there's just some amazing, um, set pieces and CGI enhanced scenes. Like there's that scene in that first attack where the, where the church sort of separates and there's choices right. like that, that didn't even necessarily 
need to happen but i feel yeah. like so much went into it that you know they're thinking so big like what if right. the entire church separated you know when the ground <laughs> is cracking open right. an interesting side note i was going through new jersey one time um and i tracked down that uh intersection where oh, that really? was actually filmed wow. yeah and i took a couple pictures that's it's cool called, it's, it's known in the area as the five points intersection because oh. if you notice in the film there's five roads that kind of come yeah in yeah intersection. right and right. uh and i and i took a few photos because that's, that's how cool. much i enjoyed that uh that film. Uh, so I chased down the, the shooting, uh, the location <laughs> for that, for that scene. That's really um, cool. Yeah. And so I, I love all the stuff with, uh, them on the run. And I think Spielberg depicts very well, um, on a big scale, a family that is trying and a world that is reacting to, um, this attack, because a lot yeah. of times a filmmaker will smartly choose to just focus on like a family, like in science, for instance. Sure, sure. Um, but in this case, he does both. And and so yeah. when you see the 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 legions of people trying to flee, or the 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 herd mentality, or the 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 mob mentality, you know, yeah. people are trying to just survive and survive each other and this kind of right. stuff. Uh, I just think it's just done very very well, and it's believable. And it's yeah. again, it, to me, it's just kind of scary because you wonder if something like that were to go down, how bad right. would that be? You know, people right. thinking themselves. And, yeah. and I love all the stuff in the farmhouse where they're mm. uh, in the basement and, and those, uh, tra the tentacles that are coming through and yeah. it's just, uh, it's just so, so polished and yet gritty at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I just, this is, I, I, to me, it's a horror movie. It doesn't have to be anybody else's, but sure. it's the scariest movie. I, the scariest good movie that I've seen. So I would say it's probably my favorite horror film, um, maybe six senses on there too, if that's okay, horror. Yeah, I mean, that sure, might be drama. Sure. But um, so as far as a great film that has horror elements, it's it's my favorite. Yeah. Um, and I just I just think it's it's great to watch. Um, it, it's another one that's kind of tough to watch a little bit in some ways, mm -hmm. but that's my take on War of the Worlds. Yeah, great take. I, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, you know, Spielberg, he's my favorite filmmaker of all time. He's, 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 uh, he's just the best. And he... He does such a good job, you know, with characters and making you care about the characters and um, right. spectacle. He does it all. He does it all so well. And yeah, like you said, I like that this film really focuses on the family. But yeah, you're getting these other aspects of kind of their surroundings, the people around them, the people they interact with. Tim Robbins is excellent in that basement sequence. Yeah, yeah um, perfect. you know, he's so good in that. Uh, and then you get the military side a little bit as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're, you're getting a very well-rounded kind of alien invasion film, um, but it is very much focused on Tom Cruise and his children and, and him, you know, protecting them throughout the film. And yeah, I could totally see how you would look at it as a horror film. Now as a, as a father myself, I definitely um, look at it that way. You know, it's, it's very intense. It gets very intense in certain, certain moments. And uh, yeah. you know, yeah, Tom Cruise does an excellent job in it. Yeah, um, it, it did not quite make my list, partly because I kind of knew you were a fan of this one already. I suspected oh, to put it on there. I probably so mentioned part, it. Yeah, part of the reason I didn't include it. This is sure. one of my dad's favorites. Is that um, right? my, okay. my dad okay. would easily put this on his his favorites list. We tease him <laughs> all the time about yeah the movies he likes because uh, he's he, he's a huge fan of World of Worlds, huge fan of I Am Legend. Um, really? He's, okay. Yeah, he's a okay. he's a big sci-fi guy too. So That'd be an interesting uh, one to talk about, actually. Yeah, about yeah. Other day. So, yeah. right. So, yeah, not didn't make my list, uh, but excellent, excellent film uh, that is just really, really um, engaging to watch. Like you said, the camera work and everything is just so good. Yeah. Um, the score and the music and and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, the score specifically. I think it starts out with a bit of a. Um, uh, just the, the music playing over kind of like I think signs might do that too. I forget, but yeah, it has that um, plays that creepy music right from the beginning. And then Morgan Freeman starts Morgan Freeman. Yeah. 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 If anything on this film, um, it does seem to end a bit abruptly, but I think that's how it's it ended in the original or in, in the book or something like that. Yeah. So I don't really have a problem with it, but it, does, it is a bit abrupt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I haven't it end. seen the original in a while. I have seen it. Um, okay. And uh, I need to rewatch it because, yeah, that would be a fun one to rewatch. Um, I remember enjoying the original. I know Spielberg obviously was a huge fan of the original. That's why he wanted to remake it. But 
Yeah. Uh, it's a very different story. It's not really about a dad and his kids. It's, it's a totally different thing, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I do like the ending. Yeah. I, I could see how you would think it's a, maybe a little abrupt, but um, it works because it's, again, it's, it's their, his story all the way through. And once they get home, it's kind of over, you know? So yeah. But um, I, it doesn't knock it, obviously. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a five out of five star. Right. I just think it's terrific. Yeah. My kind, really my kind of movie. All right. So that's all you had for War of the Worlds? All I had for that. Yeah. Excellent. Great. So moving on now to my number two pick, uh, quickly approaching the end of these top five lists. Uh, my number two pick is Mission Impossible Fallout. Oh, snap. We have a tie. <laughs> Do we really? Oh, you have it at number two. <laughs> my as number well. two also. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's funny. Awesome. I'll let you take the lead on this one. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, cool. yeah. I mean, so Mission Impossible is the first movie he ever produced, the original Mission Impossible from 1996. First film Tom Cruise ever produced um, with right, his right. producing partner, Paula Wagner. And um, he was a huge fan of the series. He found out Paramount still had the rights. And so he kind of pursued it. Um, you oh, know, he, put he, the he wheels was in motion. Yeah, he put the wheels in motion on it. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so he jumped in, you know, they made that first film with Brian De Palma. It was a big hit. Um, it wasn't until some years later that he made the second film with John Woo. Um, and then in 2006, he made the third film with JJ Abrams. So it's a, it's a cool series because we're getting different directors in almost every installment up until, um, the fifth film. Um, and they do feel a little different, right? Yeah. Each film feels totally different. That's what I like about it. It's so cool that he was able to work, work with each of these directors that each put their own stamp on it. And, um, you know, after the fourth film, Ghost Protocol was a huge hit. Um, Brad Bird directed that one. Um, he then began working with a director named Christopher McQuarrie, um, oh, sure. yeah. who he did. The first film they did together was actually Jack Reacher. Um, that was their first collaboration. McQuarrie is a great writer. He writes and directs all his films and um, oh. just a really, really smart writer um and and obviously a a great director as well so he directed um jack reacher and then they collaborated on mission impossible rogue nation and then um the follow-up to that one which is fallout so he's the first director to return to the Mm. mission impossible series um one thing that i like that he did was he basically got a whole new crew so he's he's got a different cinematographer different composer um, might even have a different editor. I'm not sure, but um, I know the the kind of big players in the crew were different just so it could have that mm. unique flavor that they try to give mm-hmm. each mission film. Um, yeah. And what, I thought that was really smart. Um, the script for this film is excellent. I mean, it is just yeah. the tightest, mm-hmm. best, one of the best scripts for any action movie I've ever seen. The dialogue's great. Yeah. They, they utilize every character perfectly. Um, the, the villains are so strong. Uh, and of course, you know, the stunts are just phenomenal. So, you know, he does the stunts in this film, the, the big um, skydiving sequence, um, which I think I read they had to do. I know over a hundred skydives to get that shot just right. Because yeah, what it is, is yeah. it's, a, it's a, it's a, the cameraman jumps out and then Tom yeah. jumps out right behind him. Yeah, yeah. And they got this shot that they had to get it in focus so you could see Tom's face. They had uh-huh. to do it at a certain time of day to where the sunset was just right. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's just so much went into that. Um, really incredible. And then, um, you know, of course, all the, the motorcycle stuff, the um, hand-to-hand combat in that bathroom, such yeah, a great fight that. scene. <laughs> it's one of the best in the series. That I agree. Too. I yeah. agree. Totally. And then, of course, the grand finale with that helicopter sequence, which is just insane i mean he's yeah, it is yeah he's he's flying the helicopter in many of those shots not all the shots yeah, but many yeah. of those shots he's actually flying the helicopter right um right. and they're just doing these crazy things that y- you just think it has to be a special effect but it's not it's yeah. they're all shooting it for real that's that's yeah, you know that. yeah what makes it just incredible so mm-hmm. um yeah a super fun spy story Mm-hmm. um a super fun you know just action film um again great characters a lot of the the cast came back from yeah um rogue nation and and uh, ghost protocol you got you know simon Pegg in there who's a great like kind of one. you know 
comic relief character as Benji. Oh, yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah. The techie guy, you know, um, Ving Rhames had a little bit of a bigger role in this one than he had in, in the previous couple entries. Um, he's the only constant. Him and Tom Cruise are the only two yeah. characters that show up in all the movies. Um, so yeah. I'm glad they brought him back. Um, Rebecca Ferguson blows me away yeah. in this movie. Yeah, she great. is such she's a great, great, was a great a addition. Actress too. She is. She is. She was yeah. a, a wonderful addition to Rogue Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the yes, standout in that film and mm-hmm. comes back here again, just, you know, really a powerhouse performance um, does a great job. Vanessa Kirby was an addition. Her character is actually the daughter of the character from the original mission film um, who gives um, Ethan Hunt the disc. Um, oh. She's like the black market dealer that he deals with. I forget okay. the actress's name, but um she's actually the daughter of that character which is a cool connection that they made that they don't even really play into a whole lot it's a very brief mention of it in the film but um a cool little connection there and of course alec baldwin um coming back as the director here um hunley uh he does a great job here as well the villain of the film the director of correct yeah the director of the IMAX, right (laughs) exactly so um (laughs) the villains i mentioned you know um the Sean Harris returning as Solomon Lane, who I really liked in, in Rogue Nation. He's got just a very specific look. He he's he's creepy. He's got this intelligence about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of always a step ahead of them. And that's what I really like in a villain is a, a villain that kind of is always a step ahead of our heroes. Our heroes kind of have to are on their heels the whole time. And it very much yeah. feels that way this in this film. And if you haven't seen it, I will get into a little bit of spoilers here. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to skip over this part. But um, Henry Cavill is absolutely phenomenal in this movie. I'm a huge fan of him yeah. already in, in the DC films of Superman. He's great. Um, uh, he was also great in an underseen movie called The Man from Uncle, which is another spy movie. It's kind of more of a comedy. That. Yeah, it's that. fun. It's a Guy Ritchie movie um, he did, and he's really good in that. But here, He's just on another level. I mean, this guy, first of all, he's he's obviously he's huge. He's playing Superman, yeah. right? So he's he's ginormous. But um, as this role in this role, he, he brings something so different to the role than what we've seen him do before. Um, he, he's he's uh, on a on a mission himself. Um, he's got this vendetta that he believes in. Mm-hmm. And um, he's just going to stop at nothing until his his mission is completed. Yeah, um, and so when finally somebody that can go toe to toe with um, Ethan Hunt, because yes. we've seen him fight. Sure. And uh, and this is kind of my beef with uh, some of the prior villains is that they're, I can just look at the guy and know that he's not going to take down Ethan. Hunt exactly. Based on what we've seen him do in the past, you know? Sure. They, they usually but, do not pose yeah. a physical threat to right. him at all. Right. Um, it's usually intellectual and they have henchmen that go after him. Um, right. Right. Whereas right. this guy. Um, he's smart. Um, he's fooling the whole team, the whole movie, basically. Yeah. Until yeah. you know that great reveal scene is excellent with the way they use the, use the masks and everything is, is really cool in that scene. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely poses a physical threat. We mentioned the bathroom fight. I mean, he's just knocking down walls, basically, <laughs> going after this guy. And uh, yeah, they're harm done. Right. <laughs> and so you know, their final fight scene on that mountain is just brutal and intense and just. And comes down to there. the wire yeah, yeah it's excellent and then the way it ties into the other mission film so they bring in julia at the end mm-hmm. you know his, his right, wife from right. the third yep. film um which i thought was a great kind of surprise yeah yeah uh yeah. and and it just tied in really well that that third act is just the most intense kind of i just tense up thinking about that you got all these bombs about to go off you got this fight mm-hmm. happening you got the helicopters and it's just crazy. Uh, and yeah. yeah, they just really knocked it out of the park. I, I, I've, mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a better action film. Honestly, it's, it's in the top best action movies ever. It's at the top of my Mission Impossible rankings. They just outdid themselves with this movie. Um, so what are your thoughts? You know, you said you, you took the words out of my mouth in a lot of ways because I've said that very thing. You haven't, you and I have not discussed this uh, that I can recall, but I've, I've said that to more than one person that MI6, as I call it, um, (laughs) and probably a lot of people do, uh, (laughs) you will not find a better action movie. And, and the biggest reason for that, and the reason why this is at the top of my list of all the uh, MI movies 
is that that third act, because I feel like um, it's great throughout. And then it just ends with a great third act. And that's, what's missing for me a little bit in four ghost protocol. Okay. Yeah. Um, because otherwise that would probably be a five star for me. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, I love to, and, and not many people do, but anyway, uh, this is <laughs> definitely the best of the six. And like you said, I mean, it's just as good as an action movie can get because yep. it's so tightly edited and clever yep. and there's not a wasted moment really. Nope. And then the action scenes pay off. It, right. it looks great. They didn't hold back on where they went to film. I mean, that last yeah. fight scene is incredible, yeah. you know, uh, where they filmed it even, you know, right. and that's, that's after the, the helicopter stuff, you yeah, know, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's just amazing. And, um, but I, I, I did want to mention too, uh, um, it is interesting that, I mean, there's a lot of good mission impossible movies, sure. but it is interesting that both of us, um, find that this one's superior. And I think, yeah. um, I'd, I'd say it is better than two, but I think really, um, it's a level better than all of the rest. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I rewatched almost all of them and, um, and I like pretty much all of them, but this one is just definitely because it's, it's as good. It's as good as any action movies. I mean, sure, or, sure. or better than any other action movie, I guess is the best way to put it. Right. You know, I, I can't name a, an action movie that I like better. So, yeah. Oh, and I, I know what I wanted to say too. Isn't this the film that Henry Cavill, um, this is the mustache film, right? Where yes, uh, it, mustache it caused major, major grief and millions and reshoots to poor Justice League, yes. right? Yes. I don't know if you want to recap that quickly. Yeah. Or, or, right. I don't so, know all the details, but so I mean, we can get into the craziness that is the Justice League movie at a later date, but I'll just briefly yeah, mention yeah. Henry Cavill's role. So he's Superman, right? They shot Justice League, right? Zack Snyder, the director of Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, directed Justice League, shot the whole film. Um, there was a tragedy that occurred. His, his daughter committed suicide, unfortunately. And he had to, he had to leave uh, in the middle of post-production. And what Warner Brothers decided to do was, uh, due to the mixed reaction to Batman v Superman, they decided to rework the entire film and reshoot much of it as well. So they brought in Joss Whedon of Avengers fame to reshoot um, the vast majority of the movie. Unfortunately, Henry Cavill had already committed to shoot Mission Impossible Fallout. So um, his character in the film, wait, obviously, what's that? And they couldn't wait. Till they that couldn't was wait. Over, apparently. They had no time. Yeah. So yeah. they already had a release date for both of these movies. So yeah. um, his character in Mission Impossible Fallout has a mustache. And so he grew the mustache out. Um, and had to wear the mustache while he's shooting <laughs> the Justice League reshoots. So when you watch um, the uh, Justice League, as it's been dubbed, um, Joss Whedon's Justice League, um, you will notice very clearly that they are using digital technology to take out his mustache. And so his top lip That's has bad. a very strange look about it. it it is it is very off-putting and and odd to watch and yeah. i will never watch that version of the movie again I, I not just for that either. reason for many other reasons but There's no point uh, in watching it yeah right <laughs> now that we have Zack snyder's version we don't need that one so yeah that was exactly. that was definitely a, a controversy around this movie when it came out um <laughs> one other thing i wanted to mention um i think a reason this one stands out above the others is because mm -hmm. For me, in, in Mission Impossible 3, we start to get to know who Ethan Hunt is as a person, right? Mm -hmm. The first two movies are very much action-driven, spy-driven kind of stories. Sure. Yeah. Um, the third film gets a little more personal. You know, he has a we see his personal life for the first time. Mm -hmm. And just at that house party, his engagement party, you know, he's getting ready to get married. Um, and then to me, his, his character is slowly revealed throughout that film the fourth film the fifth film but specifically here we really get to know who he is as a person and there's that great opening sequence where he's basically forced to choose you know between one life and millions essentially is, is how alec baldwin's character ends up wording it to him after the mission's over and he's, he's failed um and you know he has that great uh kind of little speech he gives to, to ethan hunt about you know um this flaw that he has um, that, that other people see as a flaw where, you know, the CIA director played by Angela Bassett um, sees it as a flaw is, you know, 
as a spy, he's supposed to just be able to make the this hard decision to let someone die in order for him to, to save the world, basically. Um, yeah. But he, he can't make that choice. And yeah. as a heroic character, that's, I think, such a great and interesting way to look at um, this character, Ethan Hunt, who's going always going on these globetrotting missions to save humanity, you know, from these mm-hmm. nuclear threats or chemical threats or whatever it is. And, but he's a guy who cares about his team, you know, and, and the, the, the building of the team, again, I, I think he has a team in all the movies, but I think specifically in three, they start really building that dynamic of the team working together more. Sure. And you're yeah. seeing more of them, their interactions. Yeah, um, yeah. My favorite team might be in ghost protocol. That team is excellent. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I thought that was a really interesting way to kind of frame the story mm-hmm. around, you know, you know, there's this huge threat out there. Um, but Ethan still cares about the people around him, you know, the, yeah. the people that he has yeah. a relationships with. Yeah. Um, and I just I just think that's what kind of another thing that makes it stand above the rest a little bit. Yeah. Once again, it's the heart of the film. Yeah, that that is one added uh, component that is missing well in most action movies maybe you yes know? <laughs> exactly right right Among yeah characters things. you care about that's that's yeah. what's going to make you lean in and get on the edge of your seat and tense up when there's high stakes and action is is when um you care about the people that are involved in that action exactly so. yeah and we've all seen uh numerous action movies where there's no introduction or, or time invested in the characters right and then who really cares what's going on yeah and, yeah and it's yeah. just it's just some fun stunts and this movie could have been just the greatest stunt movie yeah, ever exactly. you know yeah it exactly. could have been that but it's so much more than just that right and that's why it's you know at the number two spot on both of our lists yep all right well that was our number two uh we didn't know we had the same one for number two that was pretty cool so um <laughs> we're both big mission impossible fallout fans that's great Um, All right, now on to our number one top Tom Cruise movies. My pick is Minority Report. Uh, So this was, yeah, I guess this was elimination. Yeah, right. This was on your (laughs) list. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, I'd talk about it later. So now's my time to talk about Minority Report. Uh, You already talked a little bit about it. I mean, uh, Spielberg again, you know um just the best uh and he's like we talked about when when you spoke about it you know um it's one of his more mature films you know um you know he's known for kind of his uh you know popcorn action films adventure films you know um a lot of them involving kids you know et and all that stuff but you know he's obviously done stuff like saving private ryan and schindler's list color purple um, mm-hmm. those kind of things that, you know, show his more dramatic and, and, and mature side as well. And, um, this movie definitely does that. It's, it's based on a, a Philip K. Dick story. Um, he's the, the genius behind, you know, uh, stuff like total recall and uh, blade runner, you know, all those shorts, all those films are based on his short stories. Um, and so, uh, this one, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's a blend of genres. So, it's obviously a sci-fi film all takes place in the future. Um, but it's also a film noir. So, um, the noir genre, it, it kind of went the way of the, the dodo a little bit. Um, it was really popular in the thirties and forties, um, even into the fifties. Um, but it, it, it typically, we don't see noir, like straight up noir films anymore. We see films like this that kind of blend it with another genre. Blade Runner is a good example of something that does that. Um, so noir it's, uh, I believe it means um, dark in French. Um, so it's oh. a it's a it's a dark film, both in the tone and the look. So you brought up the cinematography when you were talking about it, and yeah, there's great use of light and shadow in this movie. Um, maybe better than anywhere else. I think the the visuals are really stunning, um, quite breathtaking um, um, cinematography here um, by Kaminsky, uh, who you know collaborates with Spielberg very often. Um, yeah, if I can interject real quick go ahead. on the scenes that not a lot is going on, you know, yeah. that that's the amazing thing, you know? Right. Yeah. There's always something nice to look at on screen, even when there's yeah. not, you know, action happening or um, right. even in the, the simple dialogue scenes uh, you know, it's always um, very interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
uh, you know, so yeah, noir deals a lot with, you know, shadow, the, the black and white films, you know, like Maltese Falcon, um, double indemnity out of the past, all these movies, you know, utilize shadow and, and light very well. And that's kind of what the, the noir genre was known for, but they're also, um, kind of about the dark seedy underbelly of society. And it's typically about a detective or a, a private eye, um, you know, tracking somebody down, uh, or something like that, some kind of detective, uh, story. So, um, even movies like Seven um, are, are kind of a, a noir, a kind of neo-noir um, uh, type of film. And um, so, you know, he, he utilizes both genres very effectively, um, telling this detective story about uh, pre-crime, this whole idea that there have been these, these th three individuals born who can see the future. And um, so they've started arresting people before they commit murder or before they start committing, you know, all these, all these crimes. So um, it's still in the, the test phase. It's being utilized in Washington, DC. Um, and so uh, Tom Cruise's character basically has to prove that it's legit and that it, that it works. And he's very much a believer in the system. And we find out why. Um, we find out why he would even want to be a part of this um, because his son was kidnapped. Um, and that's, um, very intense part of the story um, uh, where we, we um, you know, see that event take place. And, um, you know, the, the majority of the plot is spent on um, Tom Cruise's character. We find out he's going to commit a crime. He's going to kill someone. And he doesn't know why. He, he doesn't understand why he would do this. He's an upstanding cop. You know, he's, he's you know, the head of this new pre-crime division. And we find out it's because it's the guy that kidnapped his son. And uh, once he finds that out, um, he, he understands why he's going to do this. Um, and, and he doesn't really um, hold back. But the, the, all the characters that he meets throughout, I mean, this movie is perfectly cast. Um, we've already mentioned Colin Farrell, who's brilliant in this film. Um, Neil McDonough is, is excellent as well. Mm -hmm. um, Max von Sydow. Uh, brings great gravitas uh, to his character. Um, and, you know, it, it's just one of those movies that is so striking in, in, in its visuals. You know, we mentioned the eyeball scene, you know, there's all these scenes that just stand out so much. Um, the spider sequence, you know, the spiders coming in and searching, yeah. searching for, for him. It's just so good and effective. And uh, the believable future too. It, it doesn't feel like something so far away um, right. that's just right. impossible to take place. It feels very grounded. Spielberg actually did a lot of research um, with various different companies and, and scientists to figure out, okay, what is the future maybe going to look like, you know? Right. Um, self-driving cars and whatnot. The self-driving cars. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the non-lethal weapons the police use the six yeah, stick right. and the sure. uh, yeah that's interesting other weapons that they use i think are so uh just creative and and, and inventive yeah. cuz you um, feel like that could be invented definitely yeah you do yeah you feel like the police could could use something like that so um you know it, it's just so unique it, again it just stands out in my mind amongst all the sci-fi out there um even the sci-fi that just spielberg has done or just tom cruise has done um more than any of those it it, it stands out both for the story, um, which is just intense and really doesn't really let up at, from, from the word go. I mean, it's just constantly moving. Um, and, you know, the, the emotional side of it, um, re re the relationship between him and his wife um, is, is excellent, the way that all plays out. Mm -hmm. um, John Williams' score, of course, it's, it, I feel like it's one of his more unique scores um you know it's still kind of orchestral but it's it's got some different flavors in there um that i think a little more unique from what we typically hear from him um so yeah it, it's just it's one of those movies that i go back to quite a lot um and you know it's it's again it, it asks a lot of great moral questions like you brought up um of you know if someone didn't commit a crime can you arrest them for it? I mean, even if you maybe know that they were going to do it. And we, of course, find out spoilers that the system isn't perfect. There, there are flaws in it. Um, and so, 
the ending of the film, I think, is 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 really strong. Um, we we can, I guess, talk a little bit more about about the ending if you want. I know this is, was in your top five as well, so you you may not have this issue. I don't really it doesn't. It's not a big issue for me. A lot of people have a problem with the ending, the, the kind of happy ending um, that he gets and that all the characters kind of get and everything's kind of wrapped up in a nice bow. I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't either. The The thing that I can understand is that um, fans of the noir genre um, have uh, pretty much every noir film in on a, ends on a sour note. Um, oh. The main character dies or goes to jail gotcha. or something bad ends up happening. They end up getting their comeuppance kind of in a mm-hmm. way um, because all the characters are kind of seedy characters anyway. Um, gotcha. So I didn't mind that so much because Cruz's character is a little more heroic, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, there's this theory that once his character gets imprisoned, mm-hmm. The movie ends and the rest of the movie is in his mind. (laughs) So that's a way to look at it. I mean, if you have a problem with the ending, that's actually kind of an interesting way to look at it. um, That it's kind of all his, his dream. I'm glad it didn't end there. Yeah. 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 If it had ended there, that would have kind of been, I mean, just a big downer. Right. (laughs) So, yeah, you know, I don't always need a happy ending. Yeah. uh, But I feel like the film already goes to some really dark places. It does. Maybe it's a balance, you know, I agree. I agree. I think it's balanced very well, but it's one of those things that Spielberg gets flack for sometimes is all his films have a happy ending and he's kind of sentimental filmmaker and all that stuff. But again, doesn't, doesn't bother me. I'm I'm perfectly fine with a happy ending whenever I can get it. We get, so few of them in real life that <laughs> it's nice <laughs> to have one in the movies. Right. Right. So, so okay. yeah, I mean, it, again, just one of my, I mean, honestly, one of my all time favorite movies, one of my favorite okay. Spielberg movies, uh-huh. definitely my favorite Tom Cruise movie. Um, and five yeah, out of again, five, five out of five. Yeah. The, this one and mission both get five out of five. Oh, fallout yeah. is a five out of five. Yeah. Okay. They both are. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. They are good. Well, I don't have a lot to add because I've already kind of gone over my thoughts on it. So I think that if, unless you had anything else that kind of catches us up for now, I'm I'm good on that. So go ahead and give us your number one. Okay. My number one is edge of tomorrow. All right. (laughs) I was waiting for it. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, uh, I think I said before there's seven or eight, five out of five star films that he has made. So a lot of these could have been interchangeable. Sure. But there's just something about Edge of Tomorrow that I felt like that would be number one. Um, I did recently rewatch it. And just every time I watch it, I catch new stuff. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's also obviously a sci-fi genre. Right. Um, uh, to me, it's as good as sci-fi gets. It's got everything I look for. It's got um, kind of a little bit of scary elements. Um, I don't know how much the spoiler, spoilers you want to get into, but... Um, I think, I think the, uh, the creatures are, um, very well presented. They don't give you a whole lot at first and they never actually give you too much of it. I think, right. Um, I think that, uh, it's, it's another script that's just incredibly tightly edited, thankfully. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and there's a lot of humor built into it, not because yeah. it's silly, but just because out of these sort of insane situations that you're sure. in the reactions and the way Tom Cruise is able to play the, the scenes, the reactions are just, it's just, you know, humor just springs out of it. Yeah. You know? and, and there's right. that sprinkle throughout the film, even though it's not a funny film. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know, to me, it's just a perfect sci-fi movie because it is, it is, does borrow from, you know, I, I guess Groundhog Day was sort of <laughs> the first film that started on this sort of road. I, sure. I tend to like the movies that have gone on that formula. They've been, a lot of them have been pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but this one sort of t- obviously takes it to a whole different realm. Sure. Um, I could see if somebody doesn't like that kind of formula. Cause I've heard of some people that are like, Oh, I, I got sick of groundhog day. It kept going back to the same thing. And that just annoyed me. <laughs> okay. Well then this definitely is not the film for you. Right. right. Uh, but uh, you know, to me, the, the action scenes are fantastic. I think that uh, he and, um, uh, Krasinski's wife, what's her name? Uh, uh, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. I think that yeah. I think he, uh, she and Tom Cruise have some great chemistry. They do. Um, I like the fact that there's a strong lead, a female lead also. Yep. Um, and 
I mean, I could just go on and on about the film. Yeah, um, but great. yeah, to me, it's, you know, it, it could be number one, number five, number two. I mean, but sure. I, I can't really, I, if I'm starting a list, I guess I'd say, boy, you got to really see this one. Yeah. Because to me, it's just a tiny bit better than the other ones on the list. I mean, that, yeah. th- that's the, just the best way I can say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are your it, thoughts about the film? No, this film is awesome. I mean, this is such a cool movie. Um, yeah, I vividly remember seeing this one uh, in the theater and just being blown away by, um, you know, the visuals and the the whole way the story is presented is really mm-hmm. cool. Um, the action, of course, is great, but um, Cruz in this film is a really different kind of character um, yeah, than we've yeah. seen him play before. Right. He's, he's a coward. I right. mean, really, I mean, the guy is, he yeah, wants nothing true. to he do with this way. battle. He does uh, get sort of that journey. You yeah, know? yeah, totally. Totally. We get right. a great journey with a him. hero. Right. Yeah. 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 He doesn't want anything to do with it. He's thrown into this crazy yeah. situation um, and yeah, ends up becoming this warrior, you know, mm-hmm. um, and right. yeah, his, his relationship with, with uh, um, Emily Blunt's character is excellent. Um, the way that develops over the course of the film, because she's not experiencing the same day over and over. Um, doesn't remember it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. She doesn't right. remember <laughs> that this is happening again and again to him. Yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. So yeah, it makes for some really interesting things. The supporting cast is really memorable as well. His whole kind of Bill team and, and the barracks. Bill yeah. Paxton's excellent as the drill instructor. He's really good. He's one of my um, favorite actors. So. Yeah, yeah. He he was he was yeah. one of the best. So, um, yeah, really enjoy this movie. Um, it's really well paced. You know, that's I think a, a difficult thing with a time loop movie. Yeah, you have to make sure yeah. you're not spending too much time on the same thing, but you have to right. let right. people know the idea that you know he's getting better at this and mm-hmm. they're trying to figure it out and. Um, if you spend a second longer in any of those buildup scenes than you need to, yeah. people would go, all right. Yeah, I get I'm done. This is- yeah. Let's so, get it on. so that's why you get such abrupt just cuts because you're yes. like, okay, yep. I get it. We're on the next day, right. we're on the next day. And that that's, that's a skill. I mean, it is. I think they, I, I don't have any problem with any of the cuts that they do. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Doug Lyman directed this. Uh, he's a really good director. He did the first born film. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, so uh, he did one I like called Jumper. Have you seen Jumper? Oh, Jumper is great. Yeah, I, I like, like Jumper, Jumper a lot. lot. Yeah, 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 that's a really fun movie. Yes, um, it is. So yeah, he's he's a solid director. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, he, he really tells the story well, um, presents all the characters very well. The way the action is choreographed is excellent. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's just all around a great film. Really, really good. Excellent special effects too. A yeah. lot of effects work in this one, and they they pull it off very well. And I like that you mentioned the aliens; they have such a unique design, yeah, like nothing yeah. I've seen before in a movie for an for an alien, and it it right. works really well. Yeah, it does. I you know the the ending. I'm not going to say that the ending is the best ending that I think they could have come up with. I mean, okay. It, and and speaking of happy endings, you know, maybe it's a little too perfect. Yeah, a little too coincidental. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of glad that it's not just the everybody dies too you know so right i can't think of a better ending but i guess it is a little too neatly wrapped up in the end i've heard that complaint yeah i do kind of get that but i still there's i still don't discount the film a tiny bit because i i just enjoy every part of this movie yeah i agree i I don't mind the ending at all um i i'm glad they didn't you know do some kind of cliffhangery ending or ambiguous ending or uh, right, set up a right. set up a sequel which right. I, supposedly they've been talking about for a long it's, time it's on imdb i mean it's supposed to be in the works really interesting yeah, i'm working title is live die repeat and repeat which is so is weird know? because this movie is called edge of tomorrow the tagline oh. is live die repeat but well yeah i think internationally it came out uh, oh international as live yeah. die repeat okay. i think And so then this is repeat and repeat. And so it may not get a a different American title as well. You know, that's what's on the box. That's that's the tagline. That's what's on the box art is live die repeat. And then real (laughs) small at the bottom is edge of tomorrow. (laughs) So edge of tomorrow is kind of a forgettable title. And I think they figured it out. So whether they retitle it again in the sequel, who knows? You know, I also read uh, or watched some behind the scenes of this a while back. Um, I think it was behind the scenes material, which Doug Lyman was talking about the fact that this film 
the script was not even finished after they started filming. Wow. And somehow, yeah, and for a script that's so tight, yeah, uh, I it it just I, I'm just gobsmacked by that. Yeah. You know, I mean, how is it possible that a film like this wasn't completely sketched out and thought right. from start to finish? Yeah. You know, supposedly they did not have a like some days they were like uh all right what line should we use here and stuff like that interesting thinking, really on this film yeah uh, that's what they claim uh wow so what do i know you know but that you know maybe uh you know there's some people that work the best under pressure right and doug lyman could be one of those kind of guys you know i think he is and you i think get the best out of him when it when you have to have it today yes right <laughs> and i think cruz actually doesn't mind that because i heard about mission impossible rogue nation that was the same way mm-hmm um oh, okay. maybe maybe fallout 2 i can't remember but mm, i know really? there were there was one or two mission impossible movies where they didn't like they had an outline but not like a complete script like the, most <laughs> of the script was there but interesting there were a couple moments oh and i think it was ghost protocol actually maybe that really? um yeah that didn't have it all like in order where it was going to be or they were coming yeah. up with some stuff on the fly which you know, again, if, if you're working with people that are talented enough, yeah, um, yeah. you can pull that kind of thing off. But um, yeah, that's pretty surprising that Edge of Tomorrow had that because it is yeah, such a I know uh, well, just, complex movie. I mean, how many movies are sketched out to every tiniest detail and right. they're they're crap movies? Right, you know, exactly. So I mean. Exactly. Yeah, it all <laughs> depends on who you, who's working on the movie. That's really what yeah. it comes down to. So exactly. So I guess enough said about that. I, yeah. You know, I, I think it's great. I think generally people love this movie too. So this one's not a huge yeah. surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely, um, it, it's, I think gained popularity since it was, yes, released. it was because I don't think it was well a known huge at first. hit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just gained popularity over the years. And right. uh, yeah, I like it. Groundhog day is one of my favorite movies and I like how they utilize that here. It was very different. One of my favorite comedy. You know, yeah, it was, yeah. it was very action oriented and, and sci-fi and, you know, Groundhog day is basically a romantic comedy, but it just yeah, happens to have yeah. a time loop in it. So yeah. thank goodness yeah, it happened like it because we've gotten this film and then even a couple other films that aren't nearly as good as this, right. That use that formula, the time loop that I think yep. are uh, good or great in this instance. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, well, that is it for our top five. Um, real quick, do you want to run some down some uh, honorable mentions? Yeah, let me just real quick um, uh, mention a couple, I guess, here. Sure. Uh, you know, on rewatches, um, Ghost Protocol, I had that as a five-star rewatch. Yeah. It's a four-star. I mean, uh, it's interesting as I go through, <laughs> like, uh, I, I think I mentioned before, the, the firm, I thought I was, oh, here's one that I forgot all about that I think right. I really liked. Nah, I really kind of detested that movie I yeah. mean, it was okay <laughs> right it's okay uh days of thunder i you know i'm gonna rewatch i'm like yeah this is just okay it's just yeah. top gun retread but i guess right, right. About it, that it way. is yeah um i i should mention mi2 is one that i give five stars to and everybody hates it and i don't know why because <laughs> i could talk about that one i could go on and on i could have put that one easily in my top five yeah uh, another one a few good men Oh, um, great I couldn't believe how much I liked that movie because great I one. remember it being good. I don't remember mm-hmm. it being that good. It's yeah. it's a five star drama. I mean, yeah. in my opinion, right. it, it, I just yeah, it was engaging from start to finish. Yeah. It was so good, so good. Yeah. Um, Rain Man is another one. Oh, I mean, it's yes. basically. I mean, I think I have that one five star as well. So um, good. Yeah, it, it's uh, a real quick story. When I saw that in the theater, um, I almost broke my bladder. Because uh, it was it was so in, it was so gripping, you know, yeah. the, the end of that film. Yeah. And I had to pee after about the hour and a half mark. Oh. And I didn't know how long the movie was. <laughs> right. It keeps going on and on. I'm yeah. like, I'm moving more and more in yeah. my seat. And I'm not kidding. That was the craziest pee. <laughs> I mean, I, I had to hold on. I could not leave yeah. that movie because wow. it was... I was not going to miss the ending of that. That's movie. great. That's uh, great. Now, after all this time, I still remember <laughs> the bladder situation. Yeah, and I held it together, but it, was, good. it was rough. <laughs> so that, there's just a few I wanted to mention. What, what about you? Are there any uh, that you wanted to throw out there? Yeah, I like a lot of the ones you mentioned. Um, yeah, few good men, Rain Man, definitely. Um, we got to have a Mission Impossible conversation so we can talk about MI2 because it's not one that I hate. But it's definitely my least favorite of the series. Yeah, I think I looked at your rating and you give it yeah. a, a four. Or it's a three, I think a three, three or three and a half, maybe. That's yeah. not terrible. Yeah, because yeah, some people hate it. Some people yeah, hate some it. people really hate it. So we'll definitely do that yeah. when we talk Mission Impossible. It's but the oddest. It's the oddest one. It's it the is. oddest one out of the bunch. Sure, sure. It Part definitely has its, like its it. own style for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. So, but other ones I wanted to mention: Jerry Maguire. That's I mean, a really good one too. Yeah. Huge fan I of Jerry Maguire. Four star. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it, it, he just does such a great job in that movie, and it. Yeah, I like that it's it's it. a movie that um, 
shows a different side of the sports world. Usually sports movies are all about the players and this one's about the agents. <laughs> so that was different. Right, yeah. You know, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr. is excellent. Yeah, Renee Zellweger, yeah. um, super well written. Um, Last Samurai was one that I really enjoyed on rewatch. I, I enjoyed it already, but um, yeah. on rewatch, I think I liked it a little bit more. You know, it's I need to watch the whole thing. I only I could only I only had time to watch the first 20 minutes. Yeah, it was OK. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it again, it's another movie where I think he's playing such a unique character that I haven't seen him play before. This kind of wounded war veteran who's going through all this. Yeah, crazy psychological yeah. stuff okay. and you know it's this kind of fish out of water story he's in japan um mm-hmm. it's loosely inspired by real history um okay. you know okay. what's going on in japan at that time and so i really yeah. enjoyed that one a lot um legend i had to b- mention legend because legend i'm just always blown away by that movie how it looks really the, I've, the I've visual, never seen it you've got to watch it, it, it it's ridley okay. scott Mm-hmm. um he's great he's a great director he's a great director he's coming off blade runner and um basically he gets to satisfy his craving to put unicorns on screen nonstop. um i don't know if you remember blade runner has that weird dream sequence with the unicorn i have not seen blade runner you have not seen blade runner wow <laughs> okay one of my all-time favorite movies so you definitely have to watch that soon i um, want to yeah it's on my list <laughs> yeah so yeah legend it's it's this fantasy film um, he made in the 80s. Tom Cruise is very young. I think he's like 22 or 23 when he made it. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing production design. I mean, this. Okay. I don't think okay. they shot anything outside. It's all in the studio. It's it's all okay. a set that they built, but yeah. it's a forest. I mean, the whole movie's in a forest. Really? Okay. And it looks like you're in a forest. Okay. And the makeup effects. I mean, there's, you know, little trolls and goblins and um, Tim Curry plays the Lord of Darkness. And he's made up in this crazy, elaborate uh, makeup prosthetics that he has on. It's just a stunning looking movie. It's very kind of basic fairy tale story. Princess and a, a, you know, prince kind of fighting, fighting an evil lord. I mean, it's very basic, generic kind of plot. But it's just a a, one of those entrancing movies that I just every time I watch it, I just adore it. Um, So that's a really good one. You already mentioned Night and Day awesome yeah. movie i could watch mm-hmm. anytime yeah um and then the other one i had to mention was collateral um this is another I one to circle back to that but go on yeah. so yeah. collateral is such a um it all takes place like over one night it's uh-huh. basically three characters is the whole or four uh-huh. characters is the whole movie um and again it's another performance that i just find so unique um where he's playing the villain essentially um, he's yeah, playing this yeah. hitman, this cold, calculating hitman who has, you yeah. know, very little personality. And he's just uh, uh, he's just doing a job, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and his interactions with Jamie Foxx kind of both characters go through this transformation where Jamie Foxx's character gets a lot more agency and kind of takes charge where he's kind of just this very timid guy at the beginning of the movie. Um, yeah, and, yeah. you know, Tom Cruise, as as Vincent, he kind of learns a little bit of humanity still kind of remains the villain throughout the movie, but um, has this kind of crisis. And it, it's just, I think it's really, really well made Michael Mann. I, I really like him as a director too. Um, and so it was all shot on location. There's no CGI. It's just oh, a straightforward okay. kind of, um, you know, I guess action thriller um, yeah. that I think is very effective. Well, I, I think I mentioned it maybe, uh, but I watched half of collateral and I didn't like it. Really? But, uh, but if you think it's worth watching, I can go back and finish it. I mean, I, yeah. it was mainly because of time that I cut it short because I sure. thought, well, this is not in my top five. I, sure, I, I sure. got to move on to something else. I was right, looking for right. maybe a few. Like, I didn't mention Valkyrie either. That was mm, not my top yeah. five, but sure. another Tom Cruise movie that I had never seen. That is definitely a good one. Really good. Um, yeah. But I pro- I guess, should I circle? Like, what do you rate? What do you rate collateral? Should I go back I, and circle back? I think it's it? at four. I think it's at four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, it's it's really high. All right. Well, I, I can go back and watch the other half. Yeah, um, and and you may not enjoy it, but uh, again, from an acting perspective, looking at what Cruz is doing in that movie, it's just yeah. again, it's it's unlike anything I've seen him do, and he yeah. totally makes me believe he is that character. Well, and, I, I think it was again, there was believability in him, but yeah. I, I just I found the plot to be kind of far fetched, um, and, uh, yeah. and I don't I didn't I don't really love him as the bad guy you yeah know, it's one of those kind of deals right but that's right. just because i'm used to him, him not playing 
uh, the bad guy. Um, yeah. So that was sort of sure. the vibe I was getting. And so that's why halfway through, I thought this, you know, was heading toward maybe like two star, maybe even one star territory, but it, it very I, I well may, it, but I got to give it a chance. If, I would if say it what's that good. I probably should circle back. Yeah. I would say give it a shot and see what you okay. think. Um, All right. Uh, I, I yeah, I, I'm never taken out of the movie. I, I never thought any of it was necessarily unbelievable or, or, or not. Really? I thought okay. it was all pretty grounded, really. Um, so yeah, I, it's one I enjoy. It's one I've I've revisited. Quite Some people often. love that movie. Yeah, yeah, and and again, Michael Mann is a director, and he's using. Yeah. That's one of the first movies to use digital photography. It was in the totally. early digital photography days, like 2004. Um, okay. I know Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Attack of the Clones was the first digital film, fully digital. Well, that's film, right. But because I remember people would drive hundreds of miles to see it in yeah. digital on the right. screen. I remember right. that now. Yeah. 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 So it definitely collateral has, a, I think, a unique look um, just because of that. They shot a lot. It's, I mean, it all takes place at nighttime mm-hmm. and yeah. certain scenes he filmed just wouldn't have picked up like the characters on screen oh, as well. Interesting. So that's part of the reason why. Huh um okay so yeah it's one i it's one i really enjoy but um yeah so okay. give it a shot and, and tell me what you think you might not like it but it's worth a shot i, w- I will finish that one yeah cool cool yeah so those are all my honor- honorable mentions did you have anything else uh not really i mean we didn't even hit okay. some of the ones that are well received and well known uh but so i many. think we can kind of call it there yeah uh we it's a pretty good overview of most of his good ones and probably all of his great ones so yeah i agree <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for episode five of the Real World Podcast, our top five Tom Cruise movies. Let us know your top five Tom Cruise movies in the comments below. Be sure to give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notifications of all our new videos coming out here on the Real World channel. Um, All of our social media links are also in the description below, so make sure you follow us there as well. And uh, thank you so much for joining us again. We will see you next time.